Hi, good afternoon. Uh, this is Andrew Henry. Um, this is my week 10 assignment involving um, definitions of death, development around ideas and perspectives on death, um, sort of where our influences came from. Um, so I'm going to give you a little bit of an overview on what my development looked like, my experiences involved, um, and what I found from, um, in particular, the Finnish culture uh, involving death. I've got some notes in front of me, so if you see me glancing, that's why. Um, so <clears throat> to me, my def definition of death is fairly simplified. Um, so when a human or organism's life has ended and they cease to exist, that's when I would consider someone to be dead or having experienced death. Um, however, my wife is a nurse, and I know that from a biological perspective, um, and even an ethical and medical perspective, it needs, that definition needs to be more robust. So I looked it up, and the uh, Uniform Determination of Death Act comes into play with medicine in particular and healthcare. And that definition is um, an individual who has sustained either one irreversible cessation of circulatory and respiratory functions, or two, has irre irreversible cessation of all functions of the entire brain, including the brainstem. And that would be, um, can, that person would be considered dead by that definition. Um, in terms of my personal experiences, um, you know, even though death itself is inevitable, um, the prospect of dealing with death, as uh, Broderick and Blewett say, um, for younger persons in particular, can be um, particularly traumatic, which I, I think checks out. That makes a lot of sense to me. Um, as a school counselor in a high school, I have students, you know, teenagers in particular, that struggle. They, they struggle with death, grasping death, um, and it's, it's, it's unending, really, not in a negative way, but it's something that continues to persist and continues to be a real struggle for teenagers in particular and adolescents to um, start to open up to learning more about death and, and those experiences in the grieving process. So um, that becomes a pretty raw feeling pretty fast for a lot of them. Um, I remember, you know, a moment. So my brother, who is three years younger than I am at the time, um, or at the time, we were younger, but he's three years younger than I am. Um, we had a cat that lived to be, I don't know, 14 or 15, Hunter. Hunter died, and I think he was early middle school, maybe late elementary school. Um, he was really affected. He was really, really somber and very, very sad. Um, so the death that we experienced, for us to feel it that raw, doesn't necessarily need to be a human. Um, so those feelings of death and the sadness and somberness surrounding that doesn't necessarily have to be the death of a human in and of itself. A lot of people get, obviously, really upset when pets die, for example. Um, so my own experiences in development with death, uh, unfortunately, slash fortunately, depending on, you know, depending on my state of mind, happened in my teenage years. The long story short is that um, during my four years of high school, we lost five individual students and three from my class, um, one of whom was a really close friend of mine. So um, I, I've attended several funerals as a high schooler, as a teenage student, and that really, really heavily impacted my development around my ideals formed around death. Um, I learned really early about the fragility of life um, and the importance of making meaningful relationships as, as a young person and maintaining those relationships now as an adult. Um, and this, this was a completely unheard of phenomenon at the time. Um, you know, th this high school and a lot of high schools, th like they don't lose students at that rate. So um, it was pretty harrowing. It was considered fairly bizarre at the time, and I still consider it pretty bizarre. But um, it definitely created a maladjustment as an adult. I don't love talking about death. Um, and I, knowingly or unknowingly, still kind of try and avoid the topic of death. Um, I think part of that is definitely a maladjustment from experiencing so much tragic death um, when I was a teenager. So... Um, it got me thinking about sort of that maladjustment from a psychological development perspective. Um, it also got me, you know, when I was looking up different cultures um, and their experiences around death, most of the funerals that I attended in high school or have attended uh, have been involved in the church some way, but not all of them. Uh, this is very different to culture in Finland, uh, or Finnish culture in particular, where, in fact, uh, in, in 2013, I think there was a study done, um, the article here is from later than that, but 92% um, of all deceased in Finland had a Christian funeral, um, particularly Lutheran. 
even though the church membership rate was, I think, 75%, and very, very few bereaved wished to keep the ashes um, to scatter them in nature, which I think is interesting, too. Um, most people have ashes actually buried in an urn in the cemetery, much, which is pretty similar to how it is done in the USA. Um, so the heavy involvement of the Lutheran Church in particular, I think, is really interesting because there's not one sect of church that is more involved than the other, really. Um, at least from my perspective, in the United States, we have a lot of different types of religions and different branches that are involved in death, but each may have their own practice. Um, so it's, it's funny where it overlaps with Finnish culture and heavy Lutheran influence um, versus the USA, where it's not just Christian, it's not just Catholic, it's not just Jewish. There's a lot of different branches of religion that are involved. Um, so I know I'm, I'm a little bit over, I had a little bit of an introduction over five minutes, but um, so my definition of death, death is more simplified, um, but the biological and ethical definitions have to be more robust by the nature of them. Um, and, that, and my development was influenced heavily and potentially, <laughs> potentially stunted by uh, my, my experience as some adverse um, with death when I was a teenager and younger. Um, so if you have any questions or responses, feel free to post them below and I'll be happy to respond. Thank you.